Hello friends, welcome back to my channel where we make pretty costumes and things. In this video, I am going to make the 1991 holiday Barbie ball gown. In my last video, I made a petticoat to go under this ball gown, and today we are gonna make the entire thing, head to toe. We're gonna make a bow, a purse, I'm gonna make a necklace, and then obviously the entire gown. With that being said, I think it's time to head on over to the table and discuss the materials. All right, friends, here is my green, not black, velvet. I know this is gonna pick up almost black on camera, but I promise you it is green. You can tell by the back of it. It is a green velvet. It's like a hunter green. When I do photos in this, I will try to edit them so that you can tell that it's green. But for the video purpose, I'm not gonna spend the time to edit every shot with this green fabric to make it look like it should look. So with that being said, this is our main fabric for this costume. I also purchased some 30 millimeter sequins that are comically large in my opinion and I have some four inch wide horsehair braid for the hem. Okay so let's talk patterns. I do plan to draft the bodice pattern and I'm actually going to attempt to modify an old sleeve pattern I have. So the first thing we're going to do is pattern out our bodice and pattern out that sleeve and make a mock-up with those patterns. And then once I've gotten my pieces kind of solidified and like ready, we will cut out our fabric and start doing the embellishments. Today's goal is to honestly just solidify the pattern. Another thing that I'm going to do, and I'll explain a little bit more once we get to the sleeves, is I do plan on flatlining my sleeves with crinoline. Again, we'll get there, but I'll show you. I did it in my Naja uh, sleeves and it was great. I've also considered stuffing the sleeves. Again, the shape of the sleeves are very pointed. Like it's not your typical puffy sleeve. Like it's a puffy sleeve, but it's also pointed. The other thing is we are working with velvet. So I will reiterate a lot of the things that I've already mentioned about working with velvet, but we have a new toy to play with for this attempt. So I purchased a velvet board. This board is meant to help pressing velvet. So I'll show how to use this board and pressing with this board. This is the third time we worked with velvet this year and I still plan to make Morticia Adams for Halloween. So I figured it's really time for me to just invest in a velvet board. You know what? I'm really glad that I did. It's an investment in the channel as well as an investment in my career as an educator and a sewist. So with that being said, let's get to patterning this bodice. So basically I've laid these flat like so and traced around them and made sure to like add markings and write like add half an inch seam allowance. This is gonna be on a fold. So now that I have these kind of like on my paper, I am going to move on to a sleeve and I don't know the best way to show you. I think I'm gonna do some trial and error and then tell you what I did. That's the plan. Okay, so basically what I've, the first thing I'm doing is taking this sleeve pattern from an old elf costume. It's a fitted sleeve and I am cutting it out exactly the way it is on new paper because I'm gonna use this to do slash and spread so that I can get a much larger vol like volume sleeve. And then once we got the high volume sleeve, we can figure out how to do the pointed top area. I'll show you what I mean. This is what I mean by the pointed volume. Like first it's volume and there's also a point. So I have to figure that out and I have an idea. It's just gonna be weird. We're gonna see what happens and I'll get back to you. Okay, so obviously I don't know for certain that this is gonna work, but basically I did a slash and spread of the main sleeve that we already talked about. That's these five pieces here. Then I, once I like got that down, I traced a line that would be the sleeve top. Then I put more paper over that and traced that top section so that I could have a separate piece that I then like maneuvered, like slash and spread basically, so that I could basically get like a segment of sleeve that's above like where I want it to end. And then I'm doing a dart and I think the dart will help it kind of stand upward and then I can stuff it and use crinoline 
and all that jazz. So now I am going to make one of these. Well, first I'm, I'm gonna do like a whole mock-up of the bodice and make one of these sleeves with cotton, crinoline, and then we'll like just play with like fabric and stuff it and see, see what happens. Um, like I'll just use organza or something. Oh yeah, I have tons of organza left over from the, the petticoat. That's what we will do. So that's my next step. I just wanted to show you kind of what the bare bones of this looks like. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work, but this is this is why this channel is here, is so that you can all come on the journey with me. So I love, if you can tell, her sleeves are like big, like they're not fitted, like they're not fitted by any means. So we're not even gonna try to make them fitted, we're just gonna try to make them small enough to where my hand can get through them so I don't have to worry about closures because I was gonna do a zipper closure, but like it's not necessary. Look at that, that's baggy, that's baggy as I'll get out. We're still gonna make it attractive, but like again, I don't have to worry about it being so fitted. Okay, so first of all, I don't have it fully safety pin in the back because Toby is in a meeting and we're just doing Doing what we can with how we can and I did not want to sew a zipper in because we have to leave soon so here we are so first of all I added straps because I know the Barbie doesn't have them but this is how I wanted to attach my sleeve and I didn't want to deal with elastic up here because I feel like every time I make sleeves like that they start to fall off my shoulder and I don't like that so here we are I absolutely love the sleeve I think it is so obnoxiously 90s and like oh my god I think it's so, so I like it it's not as dramatic as Barbie's and here we are losing our sleeves <laughs> it's not as dramatic as Barbie's well I guess it can be if I fluff it and stuff it's not as dramatic proportionally but I still think it's a pretty dramatic sleeve and I think it will do the job now I do need to take I'm just gonna undo this back or not like hold the back um, the entire lining will have interfacing and boning so there will be structure um and then the 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 actual like velvet which will be attached to the lining obviously won't have that but it'll be attached to the lining uh, i like how far this goes down especially because there's going to be a skirt attached to it uh that will also pull a little bit on it because the weight of the skirt will be a little heavy because it's a circle skirt but i do need to take this in a half an inch on each side. I have to do this with almost all my bodices. It's just the reality. Uh, this top two will get folded about a half an inch uh, because it, this is, you know, I included the seam allowance, but I love this little sweetheart. I think it's super cute. All of this obviously too will get folded in half an inch. So that's super cute. Um, and I think that's really the only adjustments I need to make. So that's where we're at. And um, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Hello friends. So today we are going to get going on this bodice. Yesterday we finished up the pattern and now we get to cut out our velvet. Velvet is a very interesting material. It basically has these fibers that stand up. This is a micro velvet. So the, the fibers are like a couple millimeters shorter than other types of velvet, but it is still a velvet. And these fibers standing up mean a couple of things. It means that when you look at it one way, it will be slightly darker. And when you look at it a different way, it will be slightly lighter. We have to cut all of our fabric out the same direction. So that's how we're gonna cut out our fabric today. We are also gonna cut out every piece individually. We're doing this again because we wanna make sure that all of our pieces are going in the same direction. Otherwise, it will look like two different color fabrics. Today's goals are to obviously cut out all of our fabric. And that doesn't mean just the velvet, that also means a lining. And I've decided instead of using an interfacing, I'm actually going to use denim. I bought denim for a corset a little while ago and I realized I still had coattail left. So I have some white denim that I think would be a really good stabilizer. So I'll be cutting out a denim to flatline the lining with and the lining will have all of the structure whereas the velvet will have all of the detail. And now I think it's time to cut this velvet.
All right, so I basically cut out all of my velvet, which is this right here. I also have right there, the sleeves are just pinned to that just because I needed, I wanted space. Then the black here is just a regular quilter's cotton. That is my lining and this is my denim. We're gonna set this aside. We're gonna worry about this stuff tomorrow. And right there is my cotton as well as crinoline. I've discussed this several times in videos, but let's talk about it again. So in order to sew velvet without it slipping and sliding and creating all these weird ripples, there's a few things that we have to do. The first, I need to hand baste this. So I will be doing some hand basting, but I'm basically gonna hand baste a running stitch. And then um, I'm also gonna do that. I'm gonna start with the darts. So dart one and dart two over there. They're gonna get basted and then I'll bring them over to my sewing machine. I have to change my needle. So I'll show you guys that when I um, get there and tell you what needle I use. But then I need to also use my dual action feed or dual feed foot, dual action feed foot. It's basically a walking foot. And that's gonna basically help the fibers move together. So it will have feed dogs that move the top layer and the bottom layer so that I don't have any ripples or wrinkles in my feet. So I'm gonna get to basting and going back to my machine and then basting and going back to the machine. And when I've got the bodice pieces done and we're ready to press, I will uh, talk to you. But before that, let's just hang out. So I will be using a 7010 universal needle. You can also use a 7511 stretch needle if you are working with stretch velvet. And then this is what the like dual um, foot looks like or like a, a walking foot. So if you see here, this little, like this separate piece here will also help push the fabric. So I'm gonna install this and then we will sew our darts and go back to basting. Okay, I'm also going to have a 3.5 stitch length. Anywhere from a three to a four is a good stitch length. And I loosened my tension three steps. So this right here is normally at a 3.4 and I brought it down to a 2.8. Okay, friends, this is my lovely velvet pressing board. It's prickly, so you know, whatever. It, it like doesn't hurt. I mean, I guess it would hurt if I rubbed my hands against it, but like it doesn't hurt to like touch. So anyway, I am going to place my, I already did one, but, or both, but I wanna show you before I go to town on basting and sewing and pressing and basting and sewing and pressing, oh my my. Basically, because all these little prickles are on it, I can put my velvet flat in here and then with or without steam, I don't need steam necessarily, I can press my seam like I normally would. Um, this is really all I need to press now and it will help it lay flat as you can see without crushing the pile as you can see maybe okay so now I'm gonna go from here to there to there and basically hand baste like two pieces bring it over sew it press it and then come back and baste some more so I'll show you some of that but then I'm also gonna check in with, with you when that's all done and we will move on to um, the sleeves and the crinoline because I want to get that on before I start sewing on sequins.
<sighs> okay friends, so I got the sleeves all sparkly with sequins. So I still need to do the sequins on the front of the bodice and then I will be ready to actually construct the bodice. I will be back to working on this on Friday, so I won't be like filming tomorrow, but I am gonna still tomorrow night try to get the sequin sewn onto the bodice. So anyway, that's that. Um, I guess I will talk to you all in a couple of days. Goodbye. Okay, so it's a little bit past 3.30. I have spent the majority of the day adding sequins to the bodice front. I thought it was only gonna take me an hour. It took like three and a half, but that's fine. We're here, we're doing the thing. But now the velvet like portion or the, fa the fashion side of the bodice is done. So I'm going to move on to the lining. I need to flat line the denim to the cotton and then I need to, while I do that, I also need to leave room for boning channels. I need to decide where I want my boning channels and then leave room for those. And then I can sew those pieces together. From there, I can attach it to the bodice and then I can fix up the sleeves. So I'm gonna work as fast as I can to get this done by six o'clock. I have no clue if I will get there. We'll see what happens. So let's do it. Hello friends, so we are back at it today. I have a little bit more to do on the bodice and then we're gonna move on to the skirt and get these skirt pieces cut out and hanging. Tomorrow I am doing an admin day, so that means I will be doing other things. So this skirt should be able to hang for at least 48 hours, which is really helpful because with the weight of velvet on top of the fact that it's gonna be a circle skirt, it's gonna warp and the hem is gonna be all wonky so I'll have to clean that up. I think it's time to just get started on where I left off, which is I have my completed uh, lining and I even stitched in some spots for boning. So I'm gonna put the boning in and uh, get it all curved and everything curved. I'm going to place the boning into the lining and clean up my, boning, my bones and things like that and then get this attached to the velvet fashion layer. Once I do that, I'll get the sleeves going and get them attached and we'll move on to the skirt. So let's do it. Okie dokie, so I have, I'm gonna put a piece of boning here, 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 and then inside the dart. I actually sewed the dart on the opposite side than you're supposed to, but this is lining, so I guess it doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna go with it. So now I'm gonna do that. And right here is where I realized that I wasn't supposed to be sewing the bottom of the bodice this way. If you saw in the last clip, I pinned it top to bottom and I'm actually just supposed to sew the top and not the bottom. So don't do that. Don't be like me and then have to rip this all out and be frustrated and whatnot. Once I stitched the velvet to the lining section at basically the neckline, I then did an under stitch. So I basically folded the velvet it and the lining side together and I stitched very very close to the seam line on the lining so that everything would fold backwards this would keep my black fabric from popping out which is an issue that I've had in the past so yay learning for the sleeves I hand stitched the crinoline to the velvet and then I um, machine basted that and then I stitched the sequins on from there I stitched the sleeve together 
first basting it by hand and then sewing it by machine. And then I sewed up the lining and I attached those at the wrist. Once they were attached at the wrist, I turned them so that the velvet side was out and I added my gather stitch at the top of the whole entire sleeve. All right, so I have sewn the lining into my sleeve and I've got my gather stitches on there. So basically now I am ready. <laughs> wow, my sleeve is like blending in with my outfit. Anyway, I am ready to sew my sleeve to the bodice. So let's get going. Okay friends, so we have moved on to the skirt. Basically the concept for the skirt is gonna be a complete circle skirt, floor length. I have to think about basically how am I going to cut each panel so that I can cut everything on the same, with the, the fibers going the exact same direction like we do with velvet, but also thinking about the width of the skirt. Since it is a full circle skirt, I have to cut it out in individual pieces. I need to make sure that there isn't a seam in the very front of the skirt. Like normally I would just do a half circle skirt on the fold and then like two quarters. Because it's velvet, that's not gonna work. I have to make sure it's all going the same way. I also need to think about the fact that there's gonna be a zipper going down the back that starts at the back top and it's a 22 inch long zipper and then where pockets are gonna go because it is not a Casey Renee ball gown without pockets. That's where I'm at. So let's just jump right into kind of my like plan of attack for this skirt. Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain this the best that I can. This is my front piece. This is this entire circle is my circumference and this is going to be the piece that I use to help me figure out my radius. So each of these curves. So I have a front that is one quarter of the width of this the skirt. I have two sides which are another quarter so we're making up three quarters of the skirt. And then the back. Because this has a zipper going down the back I need to be able to have space. So we're just going to add an extra seam because I really really hate doing like a slash through it and then the way it gathers at the bottom like edge of the zipper looks awful. So we're gonna have two eighths or two eighth pieces for the back pieces. I want to add pockets so I'm gonna put them in between these two up here. I know that's a little forward facing. Let's be honest it's better than nothing. So this is the plan. I'm gonna use literally each of these pieces to figure out the top and then I will measure from this tip down that's Eva, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll measure all of that to get the bottom. So you'll see me pin this to my fabric and then measure from there. Let's go. Okay, so I just measured 40 inches from this mark and it's not gonna make it. So I have to rethink to rethink this whole plan. All right, so this is what I think I've come up with. I have, you can see at the top corner, like right over there, that is my little piece of paper. I've basically divided the circle into sixths and this is the, the panel basically. If you see those little dots, those are my pins. What I'm gonna do is actually cut this out and then try to fit this on a piece of paper so I can make this, like so I can have a pattern piece essentially because having to redo this entire, like not math, but like measuring, marking, yada, 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 five more times sounds very annoying. So I'd like to do it one more time and then have that piece of paper to do over and then I can save that piece of paper in case I sell this as a pattern. We're not even going to talk about that right now, though. I'm just going to get this done and go from there. Okay, I am like struggling hardcore with this. I did, I did get it. I am here getting it now. That piece that you saw me cut out was so wonky. It was like three inches too long on one side and like a half, like a half an inch to maybe even an inch too short on the other. It was a nightmare. I should not have cut and measured directly onto the velvet. This velvet and, and most velvet shifts so much. I think what I'm gonna do first, let me just show off this amazing piece. Ooh, yeah, awesome. All right, there's my win for the day. 
So I think what I'm gonna do, I obviously have to cut six of these out. Also, you know what, first let me just, grain lines suck. Like, they're great, they're so important, they really help make everything better, but they really make everything harder. So anyway, that is, I just, the fact that you have to cut velvet on the grain line perfectly without it slipping and sliding, or else you're gonna have this completely not functional thing, grinds my gears. Anyway, I just needed to share that with you because I'm not gonna lie, I've been really struggling with this. So now that I got that out of my system, we're gonna cut six of these out. What I'm going to do to help manage the slipping is I'm going to put the entire, my desk is long enough, it's 70 inches. I can put the, the end of the fabric on the table so at least that side isn't getting pulled. My brain knows like what I need to do to, to make this look good and to make the velvet all do the right things but like my body just doesn't want to like i just want to i just want to cut it out and sew it up and call it a day i just want to make a circle skirt and <laughs> that's just not what's going to happen though so let's cut this out and then um i did do a sample test of overlocking because i also realized <laughs> these edges will all be exposed unless i do a french seam and i don't want to do french seams on velvet like i i don't care how cheap it it makes my dress look that i surge the edges i'm surging the edges so just letting you all know I'm surging the edges of this after we uh, get everything cut out and then I'm gonna get to town hand basting it and then I will use my walking foot to stitch it okay I cut one piece out look at me go Woo! seriously though I feel like this is the biggest win ever uh, basically I yeah I just placed the paper down as you can see and I cut it out and now I'm going to unpin it and repeat this process five more times. I have the roll up on here, which meant it didn't really shift that much. And just to make sure I use even more fabric weights, I think I'm gonna get one more or two more fabric weights, one for where this fabric will go and one for where this fabric will go so that nothing shifts. And there we go. So I changed my outfit. I made the realization 15 minutes ago after pinning these pockets to this front panel, if there's no seam in the front, there is also no seam in the center back, which means I have nowhere to put my zipper. So I have to cut open the center back so I can have a zipper, which is not gonna look cute. And I'm um I'm trying to hold it together and to not be very annoyed at how difficult this easy Christmas project was supposed to be. So comfy clothes, I'm gonna put on some true crime. I'm ordering Chipotle and I am going to do some self care while I hand baste all of this and get it at least on that mannequin and hanging so that we can let the seams or the bias stretch and I'll come back to it tomorrow come and I will come and I will come back to it tomorrow this has been a really disappointing day like it's just a circle skirt I've made hundreds I will say okay maybe a hundred circle skirts and this is duping me it might knock me down but it won't take me out I'll talk to you tomorrow I will show you what I'm doing but I'll talk to you tomorrow Hi friends, I am still in the same outfit that I wore for two and a half hours last night while hand sewing because I couldn't justify putting it in the laundry after two and a half hours. So here we are, I am wearing it again. Anyway, today is it, the last day we're gonna work on Barbie. I'm gonna make her bow because I need an easy win, so we're starting with her bow. And then I'm gonna make her little hand pouch thingy. It's a purse, why am I calling it a hand pouch? It's a purse. And then we will attach the skirt to the bodice, sew the zipper, and hem our hem with horsehair braid. I am fully aware that the horsehair braid has to get hand stitched into the skirt and that is the perfect task for Dungeons and Dragons tonight. So basically if I can get all of that done in like seven hours I'm in such a good place. Let's get to bow making. I have to pull up the image of Barbie on my computer because I don't remember the size or gravitas of this bow but I do remember there were sequins on it. So let's get going. Okay so basically I have made 
a piece of interfacing that is 18 by seven. So 18 this way, seven inches that way. And then I, I'm gonna hand stitch it on and then machine baste it on. And then I will fold this half to that half, right sides together, stitch it with an opening, turn it and um, go from there. And then that's my little like middle bow section. So I'm gonna make up the bow and then I will sequin it. That's my plan. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, she is floppy but cute. I just need to add a little clippy do. Uh, I'm just gonna hot glue that, but I'm gonna wait until I am done with everything to do that. So instead of focusing on a purse, which A, I don't need because there's pockets in this dress, and B, I really don't wanna make. I don't like the way that, I don't like those kinds of purses. I think they're very ugly, but also time. Time is running out. So we're gonna move on to the dress. Uh, basically, I'm going to so first of all, I have to figure out where the front seam is and the back seam. Wow, this looks so black. Anyway, um, I'm going to figure out where the very, very back seam is, or very, very back panel is and cut down the middle of it and create a seam. Then I'm going to attach it to the bodice and then we're gonna add a zipper. I know that's confusing, but once we've done all that, we can work on sheer, like, getting this hem mixed, like looking good. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to slip stitch this down all the way. Then we are going to overlock these edges. This is this back edge here. I'm just gonna overlock them real quick. That one as well. That'll also cut them so they'll be even again. And then we can apply the zipper and sew up the back, trim the hem, and get horsehair braid into this. I need to get the horsehair braid machine sewn by six o'clock so that I can hand stitch the inside from like seven to 10. So that's where we're at. It is 345. I'll let you know how this goes. Okay, so I overlocked this back edge here and then obviously the bottom of the skirt edge and then, or not the bottom, but like the back skirt edge. And then I sewed this all in here. So we are ready to add the zipper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the zipper first. And then once the zipper is placed, I will sew up this back skirt seam. Okay, so two things. Um, I have moved on to the horsehair braid, which is what we're putting at the hem, and I've trimmed the hem. So I bought the cheap horsehair braid. What that basically means is it did not have a basting stitch at the top, so I basically had to stitch all of that down there and this here to put a basting stitch in it because I didn't measure the hem yet, and I was like, well, I'm already here. The next thing is I put just a little bit of bias tape on the edge of this so it doesn't scratch me, and then I'll do the same once I trim the other end, I'll put some on that. I know it's purple and it doesn't match, but whatever, who cares? Like, it's it's three inches of something, no big deal. So now I'm gonna pin this side of my horsehair braid to the very bottom bottom of that hem. Yay!
let's just talk about this really quick. I didn't end up using the petticoat that I made. <laughs> whoops. Uh, it's not whoops. I, when it was on the dress form, I absolutely hated the way this whole dress looked. But I decided to message my friends and say, hey, like, this is looking miserable. I hate the way this looks. This is what, why, and blah, blah, blah. And they gave me some ideas on what I could do, which was put it over a hoop skirt and stuff the sleeves. And then they also reminded me that making doll, like making costumes out of like that represent dolls is really difficult because of the proportions and the way that dolls are made. So that was really hopeful. So that was really helpful for me to just kind of like realize, you know what? This looks good. Like this is going to be a great costume. It's not perfect. It's not every like centimeter as per perfect as like the proportions on the Barbie doll, but that's okay because we're trying to make this to fit me and to fit a real human and to have to move with a human being. And sometimes you have to make changes to be able to do that. So overall, like even though adding the straps felt like kind of a bad idea, Idea. The sweetheart neck neckline wasn't as good as I had hoped. The skirt itself was extremely problematic, like completely like, oh my God, it was a nightmare. And then the pocket placement really bothered me. But despite all of those, like looking at it and like looking at the videos and the photos that we took, I actually really like the way this looks. I'm glad I put it over a hoop and I stuffed those sleeves. Um, not every project is gonna come out as perfect as you think it is or is going to be as easy I really thought this was going to be an easy, you know, very easy project for the holiday and I was wrong. I also opted out of making the purse and the necklace. The reason I didn't make the purse is because I was crunching on time and I put pockets in it already and I just was like, there is literally no purpose of me having a purse except for looking like the Barbie doll. Um, the necklace, I was torn back and forth about this. I was at the Joanne Fabrics shopping in the bead section and it was going to cost around 30 35 dollars for me to buy everything i need to make the necklace and then have like all this stuff left over that i'll probably never use and I made the conscious decision not to be wasteful and not to make a necklace. I might buy one to wear at Holiday Tampa Bay, but that was the choice I made. So I really only made a bow and a dress, but that's okay. I really like how it turned out. I'm really happy with the footage. I'm glad I got it done early enough because guess what we get to do next week? So the next video that you guys will get to see uh, is going to be me remaking some things on the Corpse Bride that didn't go well. Basically stuff broke during our photo shoot. Things did not go well. I want to wear her to a convention. She's one of my favorite costumes. Like that dress was one of my favorite things I've made in a long time, but things broke. Things weren't as done to the completion that I had wanted them to. So the next video is going to be about making and fixing those things. If you can't wait, a whole week until I do like my little revamp of my Corpse Bride. You can check out all of my other Corpse Bride videos right here. And until next time, may all your dreams come true.